apologize for the quality of this video. It's not the greatest. My GoPro is um, acting up. It's just not turning back on. So gonna give this a shot. Um, yeah, it's been a good morning so far. I just finished uh, a shoulder and arm workout with Riley at the YMCA. It was really good. We're back on a low volume, high frequency um, training program. So I'm gonna be posting videos and updates on that. So you can see how we track our progress and how we progress our training and nutrition. Um, I'm having a post-workout shake here. So what I'm having here is four scoops of MRE meal replacement powder um, and a little, uh, I guess a little cardboard like container of coconut water. It's about 330 milliliters. Um, so we're looking at about 100 grams of carbohydrates, about 50 grams of protein, and it tastes amazing. So it's a great little post-workout thing to have, you know, on hand. Mm. It's the blueberry cobbler flavor. That's my favorite. So the reason I wanted to do a video today is because I was kind of looking at YouTube on my way into work, something to listen to while I was driving. And Dr. Mike Isratel posted a video on high intensity training. It was actually a very good uh, comprehensive video where he talks about all of the good things about high intensity training and then some of the drawbacks and not so good things about it. And I think he was bang on about everything. Um, just creating this video in more of a response and just to sort of like add my thoughts onto uh, what he said. Um, I think my opinion on the subject matter is valuable because I've been training weights and bodybuilding for 15 years and I performed over 20,000 sessions with real people, real clients, you know, over the past 10 years. So um, what I can say is that high intensity training is a very effective way to stimulate muscle growth and build strength. But like Dr. Mike was saying is there are some drawbacks and there are some kind of caveats where you have to be careful. Um, I think what's really important too is you have to define what your goal is, okay? Because if your goal is to build as much muscle as possible and be like a professional bodybuilder or someone like that with that much muscle, I don't think that the high intensity training, the way that Arthur Jones and Mike Menser prescribed are, is the way to go. Okay. However, if you are a person who just wants to, you know, build a little bit of muscle strength, be healthy and strong, um, and you don't want to spend a lot of time in the gym and you don't care about how much muscle you build, um, then high intensity training once or twice a week is the perfect, um, training program for you in my opinion. Okay. Um, I, with my business, it's a sort of a high intensity training business. I get a lot of business people who, and who are really busy and they only can come you know, two times a week for half an hour and they want to get as much results as possible. Okay. Now their goal isn't to be Mr. Olympia. Their goal is just to build some muscle, be strong, healthy, and you know, have longevity, but they're very busy. So the fact that I can train their entire body in 20 to 30 minutes and get them good results is, is very, very valuable to them. That's what the premise of the service is. So I think if you're just a regular person who just wants to be strong and build a little bit of muscle, high intensity training once or twice a week, 20 to 30 minutes is all you need. It's bang on. You can follow those Nautilus, Arthur Jones, Mike Menser principles and you're gonna be just fine. Now, as it pertains to myself and some of my more advanced clients or anybody watching this who's into bodybuilding, you are going to want to sort of, um, you wanna follow the high intensity principles in the way that you're training to failure and that you're really focusing on recovery and progression. These are the two things that you really have to do no matter what program you're on, whether it's high intensity, high volume, it doesn't matter. High intensity got these two things right, progression and recovery. What, that, what I mean by progression is that you're log booking and tracking every single set and the weights you use so that when you revisit that workout, you have a goal to beat, okay? So you're constantly progressing and overloading the body to create a new stimulus for an adaptive response. That is the main thing. And then obviously just make sure you're recovering from your workouts. How do you know this? Well, you're gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel weak. Um, and if you're tracking, you're gonna notice that you're not making progress on your lifts and you're just not gonna feel good in the gym, okay? And if you have any questions on that, just comment or get a hold of me and, and we can help you with that too. There's also countless counts on YouTube that go over this stuff, guys. I'm just sort of kind of giving my two cents on the subject matter. But if you're looking to build as much muscle as possible and really optimize muscle growth, you have to take sort of the Dorian Yates approach. 
um, which is where he took the high intensity principles and he sort of manipulated them and created his own sort of uh, training split and philosophy uh, for bodybuilding. Okay, so essentially Dorian took the, the training to failure and progressive uh, overload concepts and just applied it to every muscle group. So he wasn't just doing like dips, chin ups, and stuff. He was he was doing direct work for you know the rear delts, the side delts, the triceps, and all these things that high intensity training doesn't always you know focus on. So he was giving every body part good attention, um, and his splits made a lot of sense. Okay, um, so what I'm saying here is a low volume approach where you train to failure is good, but you have to increase your frequency at that point. So what does that look like? Okay, so for example, so the workout routine that I'm on right now, I train my chest, lats, and biceps on Monday. On Wednesday, I train my back thickness. Okay, so like rack pulls, chest supported dumbbell rows and stuff, and I throw in some calves. But then again, on Friday, I do a shoulder and tricep workout. But some of those movements are like close grip bench press, sometimes it's dips. So my chest gets stimulation again on Friday. Okay, so it's getting hit twice in the same week. It's not just getting hit once on the Monday and then I wait until the next Monday. It's getting hit again. Um, and this I find is very effective. This is made famous today by Jordan Peters, trained by JP. Um, so I think if you're gonna follow the high intensity principles with the goal of building as much muscle as possible, you're gonna have to switch to what I call a high intensity, low volume, um, high frequency approach, okay? So basically get in the gym, be every lift last time and just get really, really strong, okay? Um, make sure you get lots of rest and you recover and you nail your nutrition and um, make sure you train that muscle again when it's ready to be trained. Don't wait like 10 days like some of these old high intensity guys suggest that that's just not gonna work for, for building the most muscle. Um, the other thing is too, is when, you, when you're really trying to push the envelope in terms of muscle growth, um, you are going to have to really nail your nutrition, uh, your sleep, and sometimes you're going to have to use drugs, guys. And um, I'm not advocating that anybody use drugs or anything like that, but that's the reality of the situation. The people who are building, building bodybuilding level physiques are using drugs. So if that's not what you want and you just want to build a little bit of muscle, be strong and be healthy, high intensity training, half an hour, one to two times a week, guys, is going to be the best thing you can possibly do. I promise you. Um, but um, like I said, if you are trying to build a ton of muscle, you're gonna to have to make some changes to it. Um, anyways, guys, I hope this helps because really high intensity training I think is great. I think it, um, it it has a lot of benefits and it can save you a lot of time in the gym. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks again for Mike Israel for putting out that video and just giving me something to talk about. Um, hope this helps you guys. And if you have any questions, just let me know.